I asked Annie and Alana if I could have just a minute to do a shout out for the Good Trouble Vigil, which is going to be at the Peace Corner on Saturday night at seven o'clock. And this was actually brought to my attention by Joette Storm, uh, who had been to something similar and heard about it and said she wanted to do it and did the league want to do it. So I'd like for you all to show up and give her your support and um, let Deschutes County know that we are behind for the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Act. And uh, as you can see what's happening in Washington and Texas and all over the place, this is really important that we continue on this path and let people know how important our democracy is and um, how important it is for people to be empowered voters. And I'm singing to the choir, but I just had to sing one more time. <laughs> Okay, you ready? Should we start the program discussion? Sure. All right, let's do it. I'll share my screen. Everybody seeing that? Okay, hang on a minute. Start the show. All right, first slide. Uh, well, let me introduce myself. Uh, you all know me, Annie Goldner and Alana Moses, and we are co-chairs as of our annual meeting when we were chosen to be the program co-chairs. So we, this is our effort tonight to explain to you what program is. And it is at the very core of what the League of Women Voters is. I put those photos up there for you to show you a hundred years and for you to appreciate that in 1921, if we wanted to advocate on an issue, we had to hand out pieces of paper. <laughs> And it was so delightful to do this study on affordable housing and have it all digital. It really was amazing and it was so much more efficient and we were able to research more thoroughly. So the league, uh, the league programs, the why, what, and how, the ABCs, starting with the root of it of empowering voters and defending democracy. And it is in our bylaws programs. And I wanted to put this here so you understand it is authorized for us to have programs by the National Convention. And it involves the principles of the League of Women Voters. I have a copy of the principles, be glad to share that with anyone who is interested, didn't include it in this presentation. Uh, also the member action uh, happens only when authorized. So in other words, if you make testimony or write a letter or write to the bulletin or whatever, and sign it, you know, Susie from the Legal and Voters, not allowed unless the Board of Directors has okayed what you are going to write to the Ben Bulletin and what they're gonna publish. And then of course, all of our actions, our advocacy is in conformity uh, with our positions which come from the study. So I, this might be a little confusing at this point, but let's see if I can clarify this better. Okay, and I like this saying, so I'll let you read it to yourselves. It makes us, it truly makes us unique. That's what I'm so proud of with the League. And we saw that, uh, Joyce is here, she was part of the Affordable Housing Committee. And we were received with so much respect because our organization has gained respect because we are nonpartisan and because we make the effort of studying before we take positions. <clears throat> so why should we do studies? Well, it empowers voters. And to empower voters, we need information on issues and it defends democracy because it increases the understanding we have of public policy issues. And then that allows us to educate and to advocate for our positions. And I like that saying also, we believe. Okay, the first step, when under programs, if you decide there's an issue you're interested in, that's the first step actually, is uh, having a deep interest in a specific issue. And it's being addressed, by the way, by Deschutes County Public Policy. The state uh, has uh, studies based on uh, the state uh, public policy, of course there's federal public policy. So if you, there's an issue you're interested in, try to focus on Deschutes County, okay? 
discuss your interest and ideas with myself and Alana, and we'll help you sort it out and find out if we're gonna go forward, if you wanna do a study group, uh, and that would be the next step, would be an informal discussion meeting, an informal group of other members who would be interested in that issue that is of interest to you. And again, <clears throat> just communicate with us and we'll be glad to help and facilitate that. Then you meet informally with your, with your group that is interested in this issue and you talk and you can meet once, you can meet often, you can meet for a year, you can keep meeting indefinitely, you can stop meeting and decide it's not an issue you wanna continue with, or you make the big decision, the big step of deciding to do a formal study. When you do that, you have to get the authorization, the approval from the board and from the membership. So the decisions that you make as a group to do the study should involve things like how long you're gonna to take to complete it, uh, who is gonna be the lead, that's really important. One person needs to be the lead and to drive it forward. Uh, you might have a budget, we did for affordable housing, our budget was $750 and we spent that on hiring a professional graphic person who did an amazing job of creating this document that we so we could then easily disseminate to the public and to our members. I think it was a big success to do it that way. And then be sure about your expectations and the roles of the people in your, in your study group. Then you write the formal proposal, which is presented to the board and membership for approval. And then you begin the study. Okay. Uh, how do you research on issues? because that's a huge part of doing the study, obviously. Uh, I'm just speaking to you from the experience we had, <clears throat> excuse me, with the affordable housing. We must have read over a hundred articles and we were constantly receiving new articles on the issue of affordable housing. We were you know, reading books, attending public meetings, um, workshops, just learning, learning, learning for two years and the interviews. We interviewed staff, I think it was 13 interviews we did with people from uh, staff from the city of Lapine, the city of um, Band of course and Redmond and Sisters. And um, let's see what else. Oh, study the legislation that's been passed locally and also in the city development code or whatever, and then also on the state level. Okay, and then you're gonna meet regularly with this committee on your study group. Okay, the study process, you begin the research, you share with each other in the group, your findings and ideas. You, now remember the study is nonpartisan, unbiased and objective. And be careful because we found ourselves also kind of coming to conclusions when we, you know, we had a preconceived idea of where we were going and you shouldn't do that. Start really open-minded and see where your study and research takes you. Okay, so then when you finished your study, it's in writing, you're all done. You present the study uh, to the membership uh, and the idea is to have consensus from the membership about your opinions on your study. What were the bottom line positions that, you, that we as a membership are gonna take about the issue? That's called consensus. And it usually involves a meeting and could be a survey, could be a presentation. And then based on the consensus, you create the position statements and they're written and then showed to the board who approves and then later showed to the membership, which also has to approve of the positions on your issue. Almost done, that's it. Then we advocate and we take action. That's the ultimate goal here is to be able to take action. Okay, so how, how do we take action? We lobby local governments, nonprofits in Deschutes County, the idea is to influence public policy, support it, uh, defend it, um, uh, disagree with it, but we work in doing that with, uh, on the 
based of our positions. You can organize public forums to provide a voice for citizens about that particular issue, write letters, testify at official government meetings, so forth, again, under the approval of the executive board, and then again, repeating what's in our bylaws about you know, taking advocacy only when authorized and only in conformity with our positions. Studies create positions. Positions allow advocacy. <laughs> it's really about that simple. And program, that's Alana and I, oversees that process. Got it? That's it. That's it. Okay. So these uh, are the studies that have been done in the years they were done. And we have positions under those issues, those studies. Uh, they're on our website. Uh, so please go there and, and read them and maybe you'll be inspired by the positions we have in those issues. Again, the website. Now the studies under consideration right now for our league is local education update. Joyce is the official lead on that. Diversity, equity, inclusion. Uh, Mimi, I wasn't sure if it was you or Margie, so I'm sorry I didn't check with you first to ask you to put your name there. And water policy, Becky and Celeste, I wasn't sure who was the lead there. So, but these are three groups that one is already meeting the education. Uh, Mimi, I assume you're, you're meeting with diversity and I'm uh, not sure yet about water policy. And then we have some ideas, possible issues that may be of interest to our membership. It would be amazing to do a study on childcare. It is such an important issue right now, such an important issue. Uh, so anyways, I get excited about it. Uh, on infrastructure, I mean, we're all talking about, we need infrastructure, the growth, uh, you know, maybe we should get smarter about what that means and what's involved and what's the funding that's needed. And then public notice and participation. What rights do we have as citizens to be notified of development and new laws? And what rights do we have to participate in the process? What is the open meeting law that we have in Oregon? What is that? So that would be another issue to, to study ideas. Okay. Alana, it's your turn. And then we're going to do question and answers. So go ahead. Hi, everyone. My name is Alana Moses. I'm the co-chair with Annie. Um, so we kind of broke it down into 10 basic steps for you. Uh, so the first step, if you're interested, is to review current league positions. Um, decide if there is a new position that you want to take on an issue or if you feel like an issue needs to be updated. Um, so after that, then you're going to form an interest group and you're going to meet regularly um, until you decide you want to go forward with the study. Um, so after that, you're going to compose your study proposal and you're going to present it to the board for approval. After you get board approval, then you can begin your study. So this is where you're going to research, um, interview staff, you're going to study legislation, read articles, um, you're going to meet and you're going to discuss. So after that, then you're gonna compose your study and consensus questions. After, do, after you do this, you're gonna get board approval for distribution um, and for discussion and consensus. So after the board approves, then you're gonna be able to stare, sh share your study with the state league. And after you do this, member agreement committee will craft a proposed position statement based on the consensus result. So after you get that um, proposed position statement, then you're gonna ask the board for a review of position statement and get approval. And the final step is advocacy. And again, that's where you're gonna be lobbying local government and providing uh, public forums for citizen engagement. And then your study is complete. All right. So um, thank you for attending. Thank you for your interest. Um, so just remember the program study, do your study leads to a position which leads to advocacy. So we will take some questions if anybody has any questions now. I'd just like to say that was really well done and it really spells out what you need to do to, to do a study. And I think that Annie and her housing group 
kind of uh, learn by fire by baptism or whatever you call that. Uh, anyway, so um, so we really realized that you know we have so many people that are new to the league that they needed to understand the procedure. And so this really helps those of you who are interested in a study and updating a study and looking at the studies that we have. They're really old and you know they either need to be updated or they should just kind of go away. But you'll always find that if you want to advocate for something, if the study is well done, if your positions are well done, you can go back to those and say, this is our position and you can advocate for something that may be just coming up that we had the position on in 2012. But so thank you. And I would like to have a copy of, of that. And I think when people are interested in doing a study that, you know, definitely just, you know, give them the information, let them know what they're getting into. But the other side of it is really exciting. I mean, it makes me want to want to do a study. It's like, oh my God, I need one more thing in my life. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm glad that we have so many new members that really are passionate of, and old, older time members that are passionate about what, what they believe in and they're ready to to take it on. I mean, that's huge. Yeah, good. Yeah, I, I've been impressed also because I've been with the league since 04 and it was always a little bit like, come on somebody, does somebody wanna do a study? <laughs> but it's been amazing that three uh, groups have come forward interested in an issue. So yeah, I'm ex that's wonderful. Alana, do you have anything uh, to add? Uh, I think Susan's raising her hand. Susan? Yes, I was wondering, um, uh, forgive me, but I'm, I'm not familiar with the website for League of Women Voters. And uh, is there a, like a, a section for training? And if so, would this video be in that section from oh. now on? No, there isn't. I don't think there is a section for training. But it's a good point. We should make one, shouldn't we? For new members. We have a, a League of Women Voters YouTube channel, and a lot of the first Thursday presentations have been uploaded there. So that seems like it might be a good place to upload it if it's not too public. Mm -hmm. Is it something that we could put on our website for you techie people out there? I know Jerry's been mostly taking care of that for the group. I don't know if Mimi has input. Um, yeah, we, I'm. I'll bring, I'll take down the, the video as soon as we're done and I'll send it to Jerry and she can put it on our YouTube channel, which just makes it easier to post. Yeah. You, can, you can always attach it to an email if you want to send it to an individual person, but we can post it by, with the YouTube link. Great, right. is it too much to add it to the echoes? Uh, we can't really add a video to echoes, I don't think. Okay. I think that, uh, you know, like your power, point presentation that that can kind of be you can say that and then when people start inquiring about what does it take then you can email that to them and say this is the procedure and then it kind of goes oh yeah that's doable because I think especially where it's outlined so clearly they know exactly where to start okay and if you send me your powerpoint Annie I can do little screenshots and do an echoes um oh. kind of story about it you. about what we did and that can go and that can be like on a page in echoes That's which would right. be good that'd be great so so to just um make sure i understand so so we league of women voters do not have our own personal league of women voters website where our people can go and look at training or look at documents or i mean it, where do we do we or don't we? Yeah, we do. Oh, we do. Okay. But we don't have a training tab, which, uh, but we do have a program tab. So this would probably be under that program tab. Right. Okay. I would, I would suggest, I think what Susan is suggesting too, is on the website that somebody who's interested or even out, I mean, it's good for um, outside people, not league members to know the process that we go through. I mean that that's kind of reinforcing who we are. So I think we should we should put it there under program so that anyone who's interested in what we do knows that process. Let's see. Are, are you seeing this? This is our website. Right. So under action advocacy. I think so. Is where whoops, is where position studies policy. 
that's there. Yeah, and then maybe maybe put under there like how to develop a program or something, you know, however you want to word it, to, you know, yeah. something like that. So I think if I'm not mistaken, those are what our positions are, what the studies are, but we could add one more, perhaps add one more little thing that says how we, um, how the league, I don't know. How we arrive program, at our positions. Just call, yeah. it, just call it program training. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Or, yeah. or, yeah, so that um, program training or um, anyway, some somebody can come up with better words, but something there that that anyone can go there and say, oh, my gosh, they really do go through quite a process to yeah. arrive at a position. Yeah, I don't know if anyone's in attendance right now, but somebody just recently asked me how to become a member. And that that should really be up here big time you know what I mean under, it's under mm -hmm. donate join okay click there and then it says do you want to pay your dues or do you want to join okay and also when I re-upped my membership it came under donate yeah well, yes click on donate join and then it will say okay you can so, pay your dues yeah but some some uh, nonprofits will put right up here brought you know boldly yeah. Join us, you know, join, you know what I'm talking about? Yep. Mm -hmm. Real yeah. Key, kind of way. Well, we'll click on that donate join box so we can see what it looks like. Maybe, okay. and, you know, so. Let me do that. And it, it might also be, I mean, right there. <laughs> doing... so that, there it, it looks good. How do I join? That looks good. Right. Mm -hmm. Join in the pay, pay annual dues. Join online, click here. Yeah. It's just, I'm just saying that not some nonprofits will yeah. make it much more, Simple. you know, yeah, e, yeah. Just much more bold in a way. Join us or become a yeah. member. We you know, definitely we need to update our website, which is going to happen if we switch our, our um, right carrier. Right. The website even a place is a work in progress for a long time. Yes. Okay. Somebody put their hand up. To yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know who was first there. Uh, <laughs> Karen, was it you? I, I don't know, but I, I do oh. have a question. And Anna, yeah. you had made the point about advancing policy or advancing program issues that are being addressed by Deschutes County public policy. And I had a question about the state legislature because there are things that totally have an impact on Deschutes County that are decided only at the state level. And there were a couple of things that came up this year that I did bring forward to the league and we actually submitted testimony on that one was um, the idea of restoring voting rights to prisoners, which apparently used to happen decades ago or even centuries ago until about the 1920 or 1820s is when states started rolling back voting rights for anyone who was in prison. And, and then there was another issue that we looked at there that was in the state legislature about considering any kind of DV -ish issues that women are having when they are being sent sentenced or in the criminal justice system. Neither one of those did pass, but some I think one of them was advocated by the state league, they, the state league actually supported supported voting for prisoners, and then I think we actually wrote a letter and submitted testimony for considering D, taking DB into consideration when women were being sentenced. So I just wonder how that plays into. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I wasn't I probably was confusing what I what I said. Uh, of course, the state will have also positions, and we can advocate for their positions. Am I correct, Carol? Yes, and, and I, I'm glad, Karen, that you brought that up because I think that might be a missing link, that we can advocate for any state position. We can also advocate for any national position yes. because those are all voted on by our membership and by all of, if it's statewide at the state convention, if it's a, a national position, it's voted on by all of the national leagues through their members. So, so yes, so I think that might be a little thing we want to add that we have. That, I don't know how, how we want to word that, but it gives us the, that we can act on any state or national position. Correct. But can I just add something here? Yes. 
But um, there is a procedure, right, Becky? And <laughs> not only that, the state has their own uh, uh, ideas about what they want to put forward depending on the budget. And so they, you may be able to use the state position to say here in Deschutes County, we need X and Y, but you may not get state to go along with it. And then, um, then you're, they ask you not to step back and let them take care of it. Um, they won't necessarily let you go ahead, but you can also, um, you, but you can advocate with them to do the lobbying for you. And I noticed that Peggy was, was very helpful in a couple of issues we have here in Deschutes County on water. Okay, uh, Juliana, I'm sorry, did you want to say something? Yes, uh, I'm new to the league. Well, I guess I've been a member now almost a year, but I saw issues uh, listed under, I can't remember which category. I think either there's a working group already or it's being yeah. considered mm -hmm. or it's being, um, or, or additional ideas. Can one join a group that's already existing um, a pro for a program study? Which, let's see. <laughs> I'm not doing this right here. <laughs> Hang on, whoops, this one. That is there now under consideration. That, the, those three there? Yes. Juliana? Um, yes, those three. Okay, so, were you interested in one of those? Is that what you're saying? Yes, and can one join that group or is that already a no, created group? No. My goodness, I'm sure all of these people, right? You want to, any of you out there want to speak to it? Which one are you interested in, Julie? Um, well, either diversity, equity, and inclusion or the water policy. We are happy. We would love to have you on water, Juliana. Yeah, we'd love to have you on diversity also. <laughs> so well, arm wrestling test here. <laughs> Okay. I, I will, I can send you information, contact information, and then you can decide. And we meet okay. the, the, the DEI group meets the last Tuesday of the month. And we read or watch a video. We have a prompt that we discuss and it's been short things that are pretty short, like an article or a, a podcast or a, um, you know, a YouTube video interview. And then we come together and talk about the issues that arose for us from those things. It's really actually very, it's a wonderful group. And it's run by Margie Lim. So I think have I, Mimi, I think I've attended at least you one. Have. Of, okay, so that's what that <laughs> is, okay. And yeah. Becky lo would love to have more help with water issues. There's so many water issues in Deschutes County. There, yeah, there's a lot happening. We haven't even decided what the focus of the study should be. Um, but it's probably going to be a couple of uh, years of a two-pronged study. First of all, what do we have? Who's using it and how? And then the second year, how are we going to solve some of our problems? Okay. And um, on the study group are, are myself and Celeste um, Brody, and she is a former uh, dean at the OL, uh, OSU Cascades. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and we meet whenever we have the time, <laughs> but we will, we will get more organized. Okay. Yeah, so Thank Becky is going to propose uh, to the league at some point that she wants to do this study group. And so she and her group, they've been kind of working behind the scenes on their own and she's very strong in water. And so then she was advocating for uh, state <laughs> positions that we had on the state level and then on the national level. So, so her group isn't really, a, a group group that she's been opened it up to everybody. She's just, I remember Becky a couple of years ago going to program planning saying somebody ought to study water. And <laughs> oh no, oh no. Water. And finally, <laughs> I think after years, <laughs> Becky said, okay, darn it, I'll study the water. So <laughs> there you go. Well, the, I started in water back in 1978 when we moved here and it uh, has been a very slow, very, very sad process. And it's only been since uh, the, um, Center for Biological Diversity sued to get the frog listed and to get the uh, irrigation districts to um, take care of their habitat that the irrigation districts have been willing to move. It's been a long slog. And there are plenty of, um, there are, actually there is a local study, I didn't see it listed in 07 and 08 about water in Deschutes County. You know, what the municipalities had, how they used it, where the sewers were, some of the, but they were looking at the particular issue of Mirror Pond in Bend 
and the sewer um, proposals in Lapine and the fact that the, the water level there is so high that the sewers were totally uh, contaminating everybody's water. I, those could be reviewed and revised, but there are just so many others now. And so they're just a lot of issues. And so we would love to have anybody that wants to come, just uh, send me an email. <laughs> Very good, well, thank you. I don't wanna cut into Freedom Readers here. It's time to, to end this presentation. And thank you so much for, for having the interest. Yeah, Great thank, you guys. thank you for doing this. Okay. Yes, thank you, Alana and Annie. And don't forget about the Good Trouble Vigil on Saturday night at seven o'clock at the free. <laughs> we'll see you there. Now, hey. if I